They say great artists steal, and so do Facebook advertisers. Do you think the best of the best advertisers start every campaign from scratch or learn from a Facebook ads course with a price that ends in a seven? No, they have real world experience and they know other people who run Facebook ads in the real world and learn from those other advertising strategies. Watch this video until the end to see how you can learn from the best Facebook advertisers, including your competition. Because anyone who runs ads on Facebook has all that data publicly available on the Facebook ads library. I'm going to show you not only how to access the Facebook ads library, but also how you can extract the raw data behind any advertisers currently running ads. So you can not only see the individual pictures and copy, but look at that text and calls to actions and landing pages in a spreadsheet holistically so you can understand their overall strategy so you don't lose the forest for the trees. So let's do a quick demo. Unfortunately, none of my direct competitors run Facebook ads that I know of. However, this shouldn't stop me. I can still learn from other companies that are better at Facebook ads than me. Like I think of HubSpot, particularly because I know them from what they do. And two, I know a lot of my audience is interested in digital marketing. So if you don't have a competitor, you can think of what is your audience interested in and find a really good company in that space to model your ads after. So just go to the search field and enter in the company you want to check out the ads for. So I'm going to type in HubSpot and then click on the result. It'll usually be the first or second one. And you can see now this page with all of their currently running ads. It'll show me the image, the video, if it's a carousel, it'll also show me the copy. So this is really good to get a sense for the visuals that they provide. But because they're all here in this kind of brick tile format, I can't really spot patterns easily. What I really want is to get this data in spreadsheet format. So I can quickly sort by columns I'm interested in. And also it's easier for me to visually see similar blocks of text so I can find common patterns and easily segment these different ads, which ones are for cold audiences, which ones are for warm audiences, etc. Now, a lot of you may be saying now, well, I'll just write a bot or I'll just use a screen scraper plugin. However, both of these could be considered automated access, which is against the Facebook terms of service because you're either accessing Facebook servers if you use a bot or you're accessing the front end, which is still umbrellaed under Facebook's product if you use a screen scraper. Instead, I'm going to use a legal and very easy technique known as HAR file web scraping. Disclaimer, I provide a service around this. The way this works is you just use the site normally and then you export a log of your web traffic into this tool I provide and this tool will show you where in your web traffic is the interesting data and it groups everything together, making it easy to pick out the raw JSON that has the raw ad data. If that sounds complicated, it's actually not. Watch. Just go to the page and right click anywhere to open up your web developer tools. This is going to initiate recording of your network traffic. So I'm using Google Chrome. Every major web browser supports this. I'm telling Chrome to record all the data that Facebook and any other website sends to my browser. Now with the developer tools open, I just scroll down through this page. So I scan through all of these ads. And as I keep loading new ads, Facebook is sending that JSON file to my browser, which Google Chrome is recording. When I'm all done, I just click the network tab and then go to this button here called export tar. And it's going to move this file from my browser onto my desktop with all the data we got from Facebook. All right. So now how do we deal with this har file? We can see it's a somewhat large file and there aren't a lot of tools that work with HAR files. Well, that's why I created a free tool link in the description that you can use and it'll show you where all the interesting data is within this HAR file. You just drag and drop the file into the tool and it'll automatically analyze the content and group together all of those JSON responses from Facebook that have all the raw data we're interested in. I can see they're here in the first group of results. And if we're not exactly sure where the data we want to scrape is, we can search for it by just going back to Facebook ads and copying a bit of text that we expect to see in the network response and then enter it here. And it'll point us exactly to the network traffic that contains the raw data we searched for. And I can just open up this file that Facebook gave me with all the raw data behind the ads. And I can see there's one ad after the other. There are all these big JSON objects with a lot of data. I can see things like the landing page URL, the title of the ad. I can see the long copy if they use long text in the description. Some other thing like image URLs. Also when the ad was started and if it's intended to stop. But I still can't easily find patterns. I would need to download all of these JSON files from the Facebook traffic file, 
and then find a way to manually stitch them all together. I could probably write some cool program to parse through them and make a visualization. That'd be pretty neat, right? So while you could go and do that, I personally would prefer just looking at this data in a spreadsheet first, like a CSV file, so I can initially get a feel for it and make sure that it's gonna be usable and valuable before I go invest time programming something. This is why I added a premium feature to this tool for premium CC data customers. They'll see this parse button here that if they click this button, it will combine all of the network requests, all of those JSON files I just showed you into a single set of collections that is automatically parsed and transformed into a series of CSV files I can then just access, browse, and download here and open up in Excel. So here are all the HubSpot ads we just looked at, but in CSV format instead. And I can see in the spreadsheet some immediate patterns, like these first set of ads, they all have learn more. So this makes me know that they're going after a cold audience here, and I can look at some more of their copy, and it looks like they're giving away reports. And I can see that by here, their landing pages, and I can go and check out all these landing pages. So it looks like they have lead magnets here where they give away something for free in return for contact information. And I'm guessing if you do that, you then graduate into a warm audience. And if we scroll down under the calls to action, we can see here they have a big gap. These all don't have calls to actions. So these are typically promoted posts. And if I look at the wording here, these all look like kind of news articles that they paid to promote to their people who already follow them. So that's interesting. That's one part of their strategy I would have not predicted. And I may want to try that myself. And they have some more lead magnets here. These look like dynamic ads, DCO, and more sponsored posts. And then here where it says sign up, that's typically the call to action you'll use on a warm audience. Like I use it in my own remarketing. Once someone knows me, then I'll ask them to sign up. When I first get to know them, I'll tell them to learn more. So I can see their sign up offer here. They kind of go for more of a direct language all in one, completely free. And then they have a different landing page that's more direct and asks them to sign up with more information. And I can see here they have more learn more. So these look like more lead magnets. And I can go and check out all these landing pages myself and get some ideas from them. Like I like the way they did all these video layouts. So I may translate that to my own website and my own landing pages. And what's really neat is that inactive ads, ones that are no longer running, we can see really interesting data, like how much money they spent on them, as well as how many impressions they got. So I can see here on this last one, they spent about $550 for about 95,000 impressions, giving them a CPM of about $6 in case I want to compare that to my own CPM. If I'm spending $12 on my CPM, Maybe something's wrong because it should be a similar audience. And if we poke around, we can see other columns like the start date. This shows us when the ad started running, which is useful because typically ads that perform well don't get shut down and recycled in an A-B test. But it depends on the advertisers. Some advertisers are constantly just repulling creatives and only use A-B tests for the knowledge. And lastly, I can take a closer look at that ad we noticed where we were able to get the ad spend and number of impressions and look for it on the Facebook ads library. Because once an ad goes into the inactive state, they give us a lot more data about it and I can click on it and lo and behold, I can see the distribution of the impressions by location and demographic, age and gender. I can see for some reason, a lot of people in England saw this ad. And this is strange, the ad was seen mostly in England because HubSpot is an American company. So I'm not sure why most of the audience for this ad specifically is from England. Maybe they did some targeting options. I'm not sure, but it's interesting. And if we look at more of these data points, we can get a bigger picture about what other companies are doing with their marketing spend. Now you may need to pinch yourself because this almost doesn't seem real. In a matter of minutes, I was able to take the Facebook and Instagram advertising strategy for a major company like HubSpot and have it in front of me in a spreadsheet. Granted, we use a paid tool. Is this legal and ethical? Well, I don't see how we broke any laws. All this data is publicly available from Facebook and it's also really publicly available because you don't need to be logged in to view this. And is this ethical? Well, I also advertise on Facebook and I know the rules. If you run an ad, the data and metadata about that ad is gonna be made public like we just saw. And everything in my spreadsheet is also available on the Facebook website. So if we found a way to auto magically make that data work for us quickly, I don't see what's wrong with that. This should go without saying, but what would be wrong is if you were to copy and paste any of these exact lines of text 
or images as your own advertising work. Don't do that. That's plagiarism. You will get caught. Facebook has algorithms that detect all this. So don't do anything stupid like that. What I would instead do is do what we just did, but with a handful of your competitors or other brands that have audience overlap and get an idea for not what they're doing, but why are they doing it? Why are they using their messaging? Why are their cold audience messages different from their warm audience remarketing messages? Who are they going after? What locations and demographics? If you can answer those questions, then you can better position yourself to fit into this landscape with your competitors and position your product. Maybe you want to target a younger audience where you find a gap or an older audience with a better message. The choice is yours. So now you may be saying, well, this is great, but I don't want to point and click all day. I'd rather automate this and not lift a finger. Well, I used to think this way too, but realistically, the point is to internalize strategy and understand it. And it's hard to automate understanding. And what I just showed you is that advertising is largely a visual game as well. So I want to say half of it is the data we saw on that spreadsheet. The other half of it is going to be the visuals. And it's really hard to automate looking at pictures and images and videos all day. So I think the Facebook interface is good as it is. So I don't mind manually scrolling and looking at images so I can know what's going on with their overall tone and theme of their advertisements. If you do need to automate parts of this, the Facebook ads library does have an API. I did not cover it in this video. It's a little bit tricky to get started with. You have to like confirm your actual physical address and it's like a one or two day process. Uh, but it looks like they return all the data that we saw in that spreadsheet, potentially even more. So if you do need to do things in an automated way, I would suggest using this. I'll put a link in the description. Just keep commenting if you want to see a video on how to use this and maybe I'll get to it. So go give this a try before you buy another Facebook ads course. The link is in the description. You just need to browse and generate your own HAR file from the advertisers you want to analyze. Then move the file into the scraper and it'll show you where that data is and you can look at the JSON 100% for free. It's only paid if you want to get it in CSV format, which is totally optional. Please like if you learned something, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment with your feedback. What else do you want to see? Are there other advertising platforms you'd like to see me scrape? Let me know and I'll make another video. Thank you so much for watching and stay data driven.